Hi guys, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, and I'm Andy Murray from What Culture. And today I'm going to tell you about WWE potentially shutting down after WrestleMania, and I'm also going to tell you about John Moxley's next challenger for the AEW World Title. Plus, AEW take more shots at WWE, and in particular, Vince McMahon on last night's episode of Dynamite. More WWE superstars are worried about losing their jobs because of the current ongoing situation. And Seth Rollins weighs in on whether or not WWE should keep producing output after WrestleMania 36. This is the news. We're going to kick things off by... I mean, like, this isn't news, right? This is a news video, <laughs> but we'll get to the actual news in a short while. Can we just talk about Chris Jericho for oh. a couple of minutes? So, a rather wacky segment aired on last night's Dynamite from the most memeable man in pro wrestling. Once again, going viral, even though he's no longer a champion, he's still finding ways to pop the internet to infinity. Now I'll just run through this thing. So we cut to Chris Jericho. He's at, La, what do you call it? Le Palais du Le Champion. He's in his <laughs> yeah. hot tub. He's drinking a little bit of the bubbly. He's talking all kinds of trash about the elite. Vanguard One swoops down. And what does he say? Vanguard One, I knew you'd come, of course. Continuing the Matt Hardy feud. Cuts another little sales pitch on Vanguard One. He hops out of the jacuzzi and he's either wearing black jeans or denim trousers. So he's been bathing away almost fully clothed. Anyway, he gives Vanguard One the sales pitch. Uh, he, he has this little baby t-shirt of the Inner Circle logo and he says, I'm going to give you this t-shirt here, Vanguard One. You can join us. Hooks it on to Vanguard One. Vanguard One buggers all the way off. Jericho is apoplectic. He throws the bottle of bubbly at the drone. He's chasing after it. He's going, hey, you get back here. You get back here. Then he turns around. He points to the house. He's raging. And he goes, release the hounds. An army of about six different pooches just kind of... Some of them look pretty fired up, to be fair. They're running around. But then it cuts to this tiny little chihuahua who's just sitting on the porch like... What the hell's going on, brother? <laughs> Jericho and the Hounds chase Vanguard One all the way down what looks like his own personal pier. The man has his own goddamn pier in his house. And he's like, I'm gonna get you. You're gonna regret this, Vanguard One. I'm gonna get you. Vanguard One's flying away. You see the shot of Jericho way down below. The t-shirt is blowing in the wind. Words do not do this thing justice. G Once you've done this video, go and find the clip on YouTube. It's there on AEW's channel. Jericho once again proving himself a master of just making people laugh and capturing every single reaction coming out of the Wednesday Night Wars. It was all about Jericho releasing the goddamn hounds. It's a three minute video with so many poppers in it. I've watched it three times and there's new things I spot every time. I didn't realise initially that Vanguard One has Le Palais de le Champion yeah. written on its little screen. I really enjoyed Chris Jericho calling Matt Hardy's new character Dumb Ass Kiss. Yeah, yeah. And his references to Nick Jackson's Bibi. Bibi. It's... He's the greatest thing about professional wrestling today, and I will not hear otherwise. He's the most... Go and watch that promo. In fact, don't even wait for this news video to finish. Pause this news video, go and watch it, and come back. He's the most How good was that? entertaining man alive, man, and I won't hear a single argument against that. Spectacular, yeah. He's <laughs> broken the internet once more. But we should talk about something else that happened on AEW Dynamite last night, which was another homage, or I'm sure there's other words to describe it, uh, to Vince McMahon and WWE from the Exalted, uh, from the Dark Order's Exalted One, Brody Lee. Uh, last week, of course, he was getting angry at people for sneezing and eating steak before him. This week, he was annoyed at people unable to correctly repeat, or not even correctly repeat, just intonate it the same way that he does their we are one catchphrase he was pissed off at someone for yawning he was annoyed at someone calling him mr lee rather than mr brody it's possibly going a little bit too far now i really liked it in his debut when he said about christopher daniels not being the only old man to sort of overlook him last week was a little on the nose I'm slightly worried this is going a bit too far, Andy Murray. Yeah, there's two sides to this argument, isn't there? There's one camp of people who are like, well, Brody Lee was really undermined in WWE and didn't get a lot of chances in his last couple of years and Vince treated him pretty poorly by all accounts, so, you know, let him have his catharsis. But on the other side, 
Yeah, man, it's just kind of these petty little shots at WWE. Sometimes they're entertaining, sometimes they're not. I really liked the line in his opening promo where he was like, you're not the first out of touch old man who failed to believe in me or whatever. But I think that was enough. And now we're kind of getting to small time silly territory here. I just want to see Brody Lee being really great, which he didn't really have a chance to do for the past couple of years. I want to see him having great matches. I want to see him cutting cool promos with a cool character. For me, the Vince McMahon parody thing, it's not it's not to my taste exactly it feels it feels a little bit stuck in the mode i want him to progress the dark order and the reason why he brought these creepers together rather than just being some sort of bloke ranting about his ex-wife or whatever the only person who should be ranting about a woman no longer in their life is the tiger king all about that <laughs> bitch carol baskin carol 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 uh <laughs> More on Joe Exotic later, by the way. <laughs> we shall <laughs> keep it in AEW territory for a little bit here. Uh, Jake Hager, the, who actually photoshopped his face onto uh, Joe Exotic before Dynamite for some reason. <laughs> it was very weird. Anyway, Jake Hager is going to be the next challenger for John Moxley's AEW World Championship. We kind of knew that already following the pattern of the feud. Jake Hager's 5-0. He's been uh, brawling with Moxley a few times. He was the main guy in that triple power bomb off the stage a few weeks ago. All makes sense. There was a big package on it last night. We're getting it on April 15th. Last, uh, sorry, no holds barred. Not last man standing. No holds barred match. According to JR, the damn thing's already been filmed. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, makes sense. Wins and losses. He's earned his opportunity. I think uh, only Jericho is above him in the latest set of rankings. But he's earned that. He's kind of made his own opportunity by going after Moxley as well. So yeah, works for me. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't exactly enthralled by uh, Jake Hager's match with Gold Dust uh, Revolution, but it, like you say, it makes sense in storyline. It's great the way the inner circle are sort of saying, well, if Jake Hager wins, that's the AW World Championship just sort of coming back to our collective rather than just being a member of ours, a little trophy sort of thing. And if anyone can uh, drag out a great match from someone like Jake Hager, it's John Moxley. And this sort of stipulation will really help the two as well, won't it? Yeah, exactly. They can just have a stupid brawl all over where at whatever empty building it's uh, it was filmed in. I think it's going to be lots of fun. The Dustin match, you know, maybe didn't quite hit like a lot of people hoped it would. But Jake's looked pretty good in the squashes since then, so fingers crossed. Exactly. Did I just call him Gold Dust? You did, right? I. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, old habits yeah, die hard. Say, but. Um, from, uh, we've had a lot of fun here so far, but from uh, fun news to slightly more serious news surrounding WWE and some of their talent. Because some WWE superstars, uh, according to Paul Davis of WrestlingNews.co, are genuinely concerned about losing their jobs with the ongoing global situation being as it is and depending on how long that rolls on for. They've uh, been discussing the unlikelihood with uh, Paul uh, about you know WWE missing their revenue targets etc and having to make cutbacks and they are concerned that some of the lower talent let's just say may be the ones to take the fall and be gotten rid of as a cost saving measure apparently one current talent told Paul Davis I think guys know they can't depend on AEW as their safety net because safety net sorry because they are going through the same issues with their cancelled shows this will be tough for a lot of guys and for a lot of people in the wrestling business overall we've talked about how independent talent must really be struggling right now with the complete lack of wrestling shows over the biggest period of the year unquestionably but uh, amazing to think that even guys in as safe haven as WWE are thinking uh oh I might be on the chopping block here just for the old uh, move Law. Yeah, it's a tough one. WWE, we say time and time again, they've essentially failure proofed their whole business. They're not going out of business, um, but it's entirely feasible to assume that Vince McMahon might say, hey man, like this is having a crazy effect in our bottom line. I've got to make a few cuts here and there. Certainly hope it doesn't come to that because the last thing you want is people losing their jobs. Like, ev everyone watching this is probably knows someone at least who's either been furloughed, furloughed or maybe lost their job throughout all of this. It's it's a bad situation and extends as far as professional wrestling, which is one of the few major industries, entertainment-wise, that is still moving forward. Um, WWE's production, however, may soon grind to a halt. The state of Florida, their governor, Ron DeSantis, issued a stay-at-home order for the entire state last night, uh, yesterday, sorry, 30 days from midnight tonight, stay-at-home order. Uh, that will essentially prevent shooting at the Performance Center at Full Sail University. And it sounds like WWE are thinking of just packing it up for a while. A tweet from WrestleVotes here. 
Rumors around the PC last week were that if the state of Florida issued a stay home order, which happened today, WWE would reconsider taking a break post Mania. The Raw after is shot. I've been told that if they are pausing for a while, some footage shot won't be air. At this point, it's to be decided. They obviously own the Performance Center, but, you know, violating national guidance on a big, bad, growing crisis doesn't sound like the smartest thing in the world. Maybe it's just time to send these men and women home to be with their families. Absolutely. I think that should apply to not just WWE, but also for AW. I know they've shot a lot of stuff, uh, but I think in particular for WWE, a time around sort of WrestleMania 36, the Raw after WrestleMania, for example, um, is the perfect time to just say, you know what, let's have a season finale and come back to all this when we can put out a, a viable wrestling show. We talked to Andy before we started recording the news and just saying how difficult it is to watch wrestling nowadays. You know, there were some great matches on NXT and uh, Dynamite last night, and I found myself just losing interest. The, the lack of crowds is affecting things, but also the, the sense of dread around everything that's going on. You know, I watched elements of AEW Dynamite last night and thought, oh, should they be standing there? Should they be touching? There was a bit where the best friends did a hug, and I was like, I'm not sure that's okay. It's... It's just this stigma all around it. And like you say, Andy, it's, I think it's best for everyone. Um, and just storyline-wise, even for WWE, to draw a line on it immediately after WrestleMania and come back when we can get the wrestling that we know and that we love to come back again. Yeah, I'm trending that way myself. Um, and some person, uh, some person, someone who's also uh, suggested something similar to that is former WWE champion Seth. Rollins, who is chatting to Jimmy Trainer of Sports Illustrated. Uh, he was talking about WWE's decision to keep producing origin, original television shows during the ongoing crisis and said, I don't know. I'm not a medical expert. Obviously, the airports are still open. Should they close? I don't know. I wish I had answers. I'm sure a lot of people that do. Right now, I'm just trying to stay as hygienic as possible, keeping my distance from many people as I can. I wish I had more answers. I wish I knew what was the right thing to do. Right now, I'm very humble and grateful that I have a job that still needs me. A lot of Americans are not in that boat and their futures are uncertain so if providing them with some entertainment can help out then I feel like we're being productive in doing something right and whilst I do agree that you know what Seth says there about providing this form of escapism as we said a million times is good at the cost of performers health and well-being not for me yeah I agree with Seth Rollins 100% I don't disagree with a single word of this whole thing uh, he addresses both sides of the conversation. You know, his words are his words, but it sounds very much like he's kind of got an eye on maybe breaking things up and maybe taking a wee break. Um, but at the end of the day, man, like he said in his opening couple of sentences, listen to the experts. Like, uh, for some reason, there's a lot of skepticism towards experts these days, and which is, I mean, mental because they're literally experts. Um, you would trust the medical professionals to make the right decision at the end of this. The people with the most information available to them, the best information available to them. I think, you know, WWE it feels like they're trending towards the time off. Exactly. Let's hope so. Right, let's move on to your Twitter questions at WhatCultureWWE, of course, if you want to tweet them at us. Uh, first question today comes from Via Gupta. Hope I've got your name right Legend. there, Via who says, I've been a regular listener for a couple of years now, absolutely love the everyday banter. Thank you for that, Mr. Veer Gupta. Uh, who says, once this is over, who is the first person you'd like to see in a ring of a filled up arena and why? God, I can't wait for that, Andy. Yeah, I can't wait. Darby Allen, um, he's, he's electric. He's He's got this insane level of crowd connection with those AEW fans that a lot of people maybe didn't see coming in. He's comfortably one of the most over things on every single show. And you know, if you want an AEW show to start with a hot, exciting, fast, crazy match, uh, who better than Darby Allen? I'm inclined to agree with you. It's, it's uh, shocking that you and I have both picked an AEW star to say for this, which is going to get got the comments best crowds. in the comment section. They got the hottest crowds. Tough. Like, I love WWE as well. We're not we're not getting paid by either company, or we're making maybe getting paid by both companies. You'll never know. Uh, but I'm going to go with Chris Jericho. That promo plus a crowd would have been even better. Uh, but in terms of match quality, yeah, I mean, stick anyone in there. Literally, I 
want, want any match. Do you know what? Sod it. Once this is all over and it gets cleared and everything's all right and we can go back completely to normal, one massive No Way Jose Conga. Come on, everyone. <laughs> uh, right, second question today comes from Henry Morgan, who says, after last night's bracket reveal, do you think it would be Lance Archer and Cody in the final for AEW's, of course, TNT Championship Tournament, with Lance Archer going over and winning the belt? Yep, seems to be trending that way. Cody has spoken about uh, Lance needing to earn a match with him. Uh, stuff like that. They tease some Darby stuff, so you'd think that, you know, we're going to get Cody Darby and then Cody overcomes Darby, uh, gets to the final and p potentially loses to Archer. I think that's definitely the likeliest scenario at the moment. I'm still rooting for my man, the Spanish God, but it's not trending in that direction. No, exactly. You sense that him getting the victory alongside Sean Spears last night was sort of a make good for, sorry for both of you losing next week. <laughs> uh, Final question today comes from everyone's favourite misfit, like who it. says, if I've heard correctly, WWE has filmed its programming up to the week after WrestleMania 36, but nothing past that. Should WWE consider airing some of their behind the scenes slash documentary stuff from the WWE Network in the time slots for all their programming? Yeah, man, why not? Why not? Those things are always, <clears throat> pardon me, those things are always awesome for whatever you want to criticise about WWE's other products. The documentaries, the behind the scenes stuff is always great. Uh, the, the ruthless aggression thing was like really biased and really revisionist <laughs> and stuff, but the production values are always high. People are gonna lap that stuff up. It's not gonna do the same numbers as like a uh, fresh original wrestling show, but they got the time slots, they got the airtime. Why the hell not? I agree completely. I think, you know, just off the top of my head, WWE 24, Chronicle, 365, Stone Cold uh, Sessions thing. That Legend has. House. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's so much good stuff. The Monday Night War thing, if you've never watched that and then just put that out there, it is complete bollocks for the most part about elements of the Monday Night War. But regardless, it is still very entertaining and something that, you know, classic wrestling fans will still hold dear to their heart. They are not going to struggle to fill those time slots. So rather than just giving them up, just remind everyone, you know, what makes WWE so great. And that's some of the amazing stuff they can produce in house. Right, let's move on to today's and finally, and we mentioned Joe Exotic earlier on. And Andy Murray, I've been doing a little bit of uh, scouting on R Squared Circle recently. Do you know who Joe Exotic's favorite wrestler is well joe exotics the tiger king so it's got to be tiger ali singh right it's not tiger ali singh but there is a photo on reddit squared circle right now of joe exotic with the modern day maharaja jinder Mahal. fair play that uh, jinder is his favorite no one wrestler called that, i'll be honest okay all right. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a choice, and he's made it. <laughs> also, by the looks of this photo, it's Jinder Mahal before you know Jinder Mahal was WWE champion. Yeah. It's like three MB Jinder Mahal. Ah, uh, okay. Before he had that indie run and started. Indeed. I think probably this is probably during the indie run, if I'm guessing. Okay. Yeah, when he was working out a lot and came back jacked and stuff. He's, there's a picture of Joe Exotic with Tim Storm floating around as well. The guy. <laughs> He's some. He's a. He's a. He should be a wrestling character. If he wasn't so wrong, he should be yeah. a wrestling character. I. Uh, I'm predicting though that when we all get back to normal, Jinder Mahal is going to make an entrance with a tiger. Oh, Just like God. Scott Steiner did used to. Do, like, was it in WCW? I think it was in WCW. I think so. I think yeah, so. Classic. All right. Let us know your thoughts on that and who you want to see uh, first back in a wrestling ring when this all goes back to normal in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on either iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Myself and the Dadly Boys reviewing the Wednesday Night War a little bit later on today. Day. Uh, plus, let us know your thoughts and Twitter questions on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE. And watch there, follow both of us. You can follow Andy at... At Andy H. Murray. The H stands for, hey, man, it's WrestleMania week. Can we all, like, cheer up a little bit? Maybe stop being so cynical about our escapism at this difficult time. Look forward to the show. I'm sure it's going to be fine. Exactly, and we're going to be doing some live streams for it. More information on that coming very soon. You can follow me at Adam Wilborn. Follow us all at WhatCultureWWE. But for now, my thanks to Andy Murray. Thank you for watching. We'll see you soon.